Um, where were we? The commission for the bronze bull. I don't know if that's if that's important. I thought the lantern went to the sculptor Andrea di Del Verrocchio, who in whose workshop there was at the time at this time a young apprentice apprentice named Leonardo da Vinci. So, huh. I think Leonardo was not. Like the timing might be wrong in the game. I'm not sure when he. Anyway. Fascinated by Filippo's machines, of uh, Brunelleschi's machines, which Verrocchio used to hoist the ball, Le Leonardo made a series of sketches of them and as a result is often given credit for the invention. Haha! <laughs> Leonardo might have also participated in the design of the bronze ball, as stated in the G manuscript of Paris. Remember the way we soldered the ball of Santa Maria del Fiore? Uh, the decorations of the drum gallery by Baccio di Ag Agnolo were never finished after being disapproved by no one less than Michelangelo. Ha! Huh. A huge statue of Brunelleschi now sits outside the Palazzo di Canonici in the Piazza del Duomo, looking thoughtfully up towards his greatest achievement, the dome that would forever f dominate the panorama of Florence. It is still the largest masonry dome in the world. Amazing. The building of the cathedral had started in 1296 with the design of... Wait a minute, why are we... Huh, okay, this is the facade. Uh, the original facade, designed by Arnolfo di Cambio and usually attributed to Giotto, was actually begun 20 years after Giotto's death. A mid-15th century pen and ink drawing of this so-called Giotto's facade is visible in the Codex Rustici, Rustici, and in the drawing of Bernardino Pochetti, Pochetti in 1587, both on display in the Museum of the Opera del Duomo. This facade was the collective work of several artists, among them Andrea Ocagna and Tadio Gatti. This original facade was only completed in its lower portion and then left unfinished. Ah, so only the lower portion should be finished. It was dismantled in 1587 and 1588 by the Medici court architect Bernardo Botan Botelan Bontel. I don't know. This. Ordered by Grand Duke Francesco de Medici, as it appeared totally outmodeled in Renaissance times. Some of the original sculptures are on display in the museum behind the cathedral, others are now in the muse Berlin Museum and in the Louvre. Louvre. In the, Louvre. the uh, competition for a new facade turned into a huge corruption scandal. The wooden model for the facade of Bontelente is on display in the museum. Okay, oh, everything is, in the, this is on display in that museum. A few new designs have been proposed in later years, but the models. Uh, were not accepted. The facade was then left bare until the 19th century. Okay, so there was an older facade which was half built, or at least only the lower bits were built, and then it got removed, and then there was a competition, and then it was never completed. Until 1864, a competition was held to design a new facade. So the one we see in game is this, the modern one, which is not correct historically, but okay. Uh, main portal, the three huge bronze doors date from 1899 to 1903. They are adorned with scenes from the life of a Madonna. The mosaics in the lunettes above the doors were designed by Niccolo Barabino. They represent from left to right charity among the founders, blah blah blah. I'm not really all that interested. But the doors, actually, can we look at that in game? So that's from, you know, 1899 to 1903, that's a lot later than when Assassin's Creed is supposed to happen. So let's let's just kind of jump down. Or try to jump down, if we can... Why am I not... Okay, get down. Uh, let's still have a look at the front door. Let's see if that's historically accurate. Which it probably is not. Okay, front door. Uh, 
Aha, uh -huh, it is not historically accurate. Let's see, that or that. Okay, I think these are the modern doors. These are not supposed to be there in the time of Assassin's Creed. Okay, well, that's, I mean, it's fair enough. I'm not complaining about that too much. Alright, so the next part of Wikipedia talks about the interior. You see the interior there, but to get to the interior, what we're going to do is to start this quest, actually, while we're here. Ah, uh, you can look at that yourself in Google if you want to. Alright, let's go inside. Yes! Isn't this fun? Like, isn't this isn't this fun? Like, you read about history and then you go go run around these buildings. I'm having fun. You should do this yourself. Instead of listening to me read and do all this stuff, you guys should do this yourselves. Also, is this building bigger on the inside than it is on the Grazia, that? stay away from the artwork on the walls. And when your men paint the dome, take care not to disturb any of the sacred relics in the Lanterna on top. They are the most important artifacts in our church. Yes, yes, Padre. Just make sure to pay us the full sum for our work. Yes. Alright, so we're gonna sneak into the inside of the church. I don't know why we need to go... Wait a minute. We went through a hidden door to get to the inside. But this is just the ordinary interior. You can just walk in the front door and get here. Why does there need to be a hidden side door to get here? Anyway... Hey! Check it out. This is the interior. Well, kind of. Alright. So... There's the floor. There's the front door. So let's just stand here. So... That's the church. If you remember, there was like a, a wide central nave, and then there's kind of these side aisles. And what was it? Like, it was supposed to be four squares. So the central nave should be four square modules. So there's one right here. So one, two, three, and then four. And then beyond that, there's the dome. Oh, we can't look up any more than this. So there's the dome there, you can barely see it. Apparently, Ezio can't look straight upwards. And then there's these kind of things there, and alright. Amazing. 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 They did keep the, uh, the interiors quite plain though, I think it's more for gameplay purposes. Because if it's kind of bright, you know, if there's bright paintings and, and sculptures everywhere, then it's kind of difficult to see where you're going. And the point of this mission really is to climb to the top of the dome from the interior. Anyway, let's, let's run back and run around and then be silly for a little bit. And then read Wikipedia. Fun, right? Fun times. Okay. The Gothic interior is vast and gives an empty impression. Well, actually, no, it's, it's white there as well. That's interesting. Most cathedrals are really richly decorated, but apparently the interior is white there as well, in real life. Uh, the relative bareness of the church corresponds with the austerity of, re of religious life as preached by Girolamo, Gio Girolamo? G Girolamo Savonarola. Many decorations in the church have been lost in the course of time or have been transferred to the Museum Opera del Duomo, such as the magnificent cantorial pulpits, the singing galleries for the cloisters of Luca della Robbia and Donatello. Wait a minute, they've been removed from the church? That's strange. Uh, as this cathedral was built with funds from the public, some important works of art in this church honor illustrious, illustrious men and military leaders of Florence. Uh, Dante Before the City of Florence by Domenico di Michelino, 1463. This painting is especially interesting because it shows us, apart from scenes from the Divine Comedy, a view on Florence in 1465. Uh, a Florence such as Dante himself could not have seen in his time. 
Okay. Uh, Dante and the Divine Comedy. Can we find these things in the game? Like... Hey, what is this? What is this? What is that thing? What is... What is those things there? Dante and the Divine Comedy? No, no, I don't, I don't see... Well, there's that statue there. Hold on, what is, what is this? I mean, there's this. Statue of St. Reparata, to whom the previous cathedral was dedicated in the main portal. Um... That's not it. And... That's not it neither. Huh. Stained glass windows, no, that's not what we're looking for. Main one, no, no, I don't see... Huh, we don't have the artwork. In fact, I don't see any other stuff. I don't... Actually, okay, actually, there is that. There's that. Uh, equestrian statue of Nicola da Tolentino by Andrea del Castagno. This fresco transferred on canvas in the 19th century. It's the same style as the previous one. It's painted a color resembling marble, however, it's more richly decorated. Hmm, not sure I'm, I'm all that interested in the artwork. Although you see that, there's a fresco inside the dome, but it's painted in the 1500s. So we don't see it here. The dome, interior dome right now, it's bare. And as we walked in, you heard the, the, the NPC talked about how, you know, they were painting the interior of the dome and don't touch anything in the at the top and stuff like that. So the, the dome is not painted yet in the game and they got that part right. So that's the painting there. Interesting. Um, I don't know if I care about if I care about the painting so much. Last judgment under the dome, we don't see that in here neither. In the monumental crucifix behind the bishop's chair at the high altar. Uh 1495, 1497, that should not be there neither, but there is a giant crucifix in the game. That's a lot of artwork. A lot of artwork, a lot of artwork. Okay, um, it, it was suggested that the interior of this 45 meter wide dome should be covered with a mosaic decoration to make the most of the available lights coming through the circular windows of the drum and through the lantern. Brunelleschi had, had proposed the vault to glimmer with resplendent gold, but his death in 1446 put an end to this project, and the walls of the dome were whitewashed. Grand Duke Cosimo I de' Medici decided to have the dome painted with a representation of the Last Judgment. This enormous work, uh, 3,600 meters squared of painted surface, was started in 1568 by Giorgio Vasari. Oh, this is much later on. So it's not in game, all right. So all the artwork was was done later, or well, most of it was done later. All right, so I'm not going to read any more of that. I think I'm done with reading for now. And there's the there's the Duomo. There we go. Ah, this thing, this thing is not in in game because that's built later on. I think that's the museum, or is that the museum? I'm not sure. Anyway, there we go. There's the cathedral. They pretty much copy it directly into the game. They just kind of shrunk it down a little bit to make it fit. And so you can see here there's people on top of the lantern, so you can come up here as a tourist thing. So you can see how tall the people were here uh, compared to the height of the lantern and all that. So yeah, it, it's smaller in game than it should be in real life. But that's alright. Look how, look how small the people are. Look how big the cathedral is. Amazing. Um, what should we do now? I mean, I've done all the reading. I guess we should do this and just kind of run around the interior. I guess this is more part of gameplay than than architecture now, to run around inside this. But uh, alright, let's just do this as part of the architecture tour of the Duomo of Florence. So we're supposed to start here. And oh, wait a minute, is this is this the artwork that Wikipedia was talking about? Find the assassin aside. Oh, there it is. Look at that. 
look at that there. It's a clock thing. That was... Look at there it is. There's that thing there. Huge clock decorated by Paolo Uccello. Uh, where is it? Where's the, uh, where's the clock? Where's the clock? Where's the clock? No, no, no. Um, ah, here we go. Above the main door is the colossal clock face with fresco paintings of four prophets of evangelists by Paolo Uccello. This one-handed liturgical clock shows the 24 hours of the whole Italica, Italian time, a period of time ending with the sunset at 24 hours. This timetable was used until the 18th century. This is one of the few clocks from that time that still exist and are in working order. Amazing. Does that clock move? Not sure. According to this, it's like 3. So it should be, uh... Wait a minute. 24 is night time, so it should be like just after sunset, or three hours after sunset, according to that, anyway. We should be going around here. I think. And this is fun too, like if you're a tourist and you go to Florence and you go to the cathedral, you don't get to climb around the inside. <laughs> I mean, you should just kind of stand at the ground, so stand on the ground and look up at the amazing architecture. So, I mean, the game, like, it doesn't there are some things that the game misses out, but then there are some things that the game offers you that you don't get in real life. Which is to say, you don't get to climb around the interior of famous buildings in real life, but you do in game. Like, look at this, this is fun, isn't it? Of course it's fun. Are you guys paying attention to this interior too? Like, do you guys remember the exterior of the cathedral? And how that corresponds to the interior? So there's like a there's those circular windows there, right? So there's a pointed roof above us. And there's kind of roofs down there and then the windows. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys. But I'm trying to describe the... The relationship between the interior and exterior of the building. Alright, we can get up here. And we'll kick this ladder down. That's a checkpoint. Ben. Now I have a way back up in case I fall. Good. So there's a no get up. So there's a checkpoint. We need to keep going up on this side. Fun times. I'm just climbing around the inside of a famous church. Fun times. Okay, so we are going to go this way. Stained glass windows. Pretty impressive. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything worth talking about, you know, on the uh, on the floor. But you can see the multicolored marble. The same colors that they use outside. So there's the the white, the green, and the red. There's a lot of money invested in this thing. I don't know if I. I guess that means we should go here. Okay, so there's that, and then we can climb that. So... The game designers decided to make us go back and forth across the cathedral. To maximize the amount of jumping around we can have in this game, in this building. I guess we're going this way now. These beams and things aren't there in real life, by the way, so... Even if you wanted to, you can't do this. Uh, what's going on here? Alright, more checkpoint. So now this bit gets a bit complicated. It's circular and we have to go upwards. As the camera slowly pans around to tell you that you have to go upwards and it's circular. That's also not accurate, I don't think. I don't remember the... Actually, I don't, I don't remember the interior of the, of the dome, whether it looks like that or not. Maybe we can... Hmm... Oh, uh, well, I guess it's that. Yeah, that's that thing sticking down. I don't think it's there in real life, neither, because it makes no sense to have a thing hanging downwards like that. 
<laughs> Assassin's Creed 2. See that? So that we're looking up at the dome, and the lantern is just like there's a, there's a hole at the top, and then the lantern is just above it. Whereas in the game, there's a thing sticking down from here, which is which is not makes no sense architecturally, but in terms of the gameplay, that's how we get up there. So, like that thing is sticking downwards. That's not supposed to be there. It makes no sense really. Anyway, let's just keep running around here. Um, I guess the game wants me to go that way? Uh, I don't think we're going up to the cross. Though I could be wrong. I think the pigeons also tell you where to go. I'm not sure why there's pigeons inside here. That might be a bad thing for the architecture, because there's poop, bird poop everywhere. Uh, this way. The camera is also constrained too, so the camera forces you to look at where you're supposed to go. So there's a lot of things the game designers are doing to help you. Even though you might think, oh it's a game, you need to figure out where to go. No, the game designers actually tell you where you need to go. But they put pigeons everywhere, and then in, in parts where it's kind of ambiguous, they just force the camera to point a certain way like this. You see this? The camera doesn't allow you to look anywhere else, so then you kind of have to go up where you're supposed to go. I mean, game design is not just about, you know, making a thing and then, oh no, don't, please, don't fall down. Like, there's, there's a lot more to it than just putting a building here. You know? Uh, are we going this way, I think? Checkpoint reached, but there's no ladder. Okay, so now we're going f that way. And we're climbing up. Uh, okay, he doesn't really want to do that. How am I going to get up? Can I get up here? No. Guess we have to shimmy all the way around. To here, can I get up here? I can. All right. Let's just make you shimmy around a little bit, and then here. So now we can, you know, look back down at the cathedral. Not that impressive, though. From here, like not much to see. Interesting, though. Like any of these viewpoints, you won't get by visiting the main, like the real building. Very cool. Very awesome. So, apparently they want us to go that way, and there's a thing there. Oh, that might, this must be optional. That must be a thing that we can... Must be loot. It is loot, isn't it? Uh, okay, I can't get over there. That's a shame. I think, yes, what I need to do is... That. No way. What? You, are you kidding me? I'm so sad, guys. I'm so sad. Are you kidding me? I mean, I'm pretty sure you <sighs> It's the, it's the keyboard. Trying to make him jump around on a keyboard that only has four arrow keys is not. No, what are you? I don't know, guys. Do you want to see me do this again? Do you really want to see me do this again? It's gonna take a long time to get back up there. I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's just see how fast we can do this. Although, if I try to do that, it'd probably fall off again. Okay. 
So we're back here, we still have to go like around like three more times or something crazy. I think. Now get across. Okay, are we... No, we still have to go up. Ah, fail. Alright. So this is like the second bit here. Let's go up. Please don't fail again. Uh, please don't fail again. If I fail again, I just won't record me climbing back up, because I don't want to waste your time watching me fail over and over again. Alright, so there's this, right? Alright, there's this. Okay. Do I... No, I need to get... Uh, no, I need to get up there, don't I? Can I even make this jump? It, like, the game tells me... Okay, okay. You can do that. Good. What are you, whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? Don't be, don't be crazy. Okay, loot. We got it, guys. Secret area located. All that for 250 florins. Uh, now how do we get back down? Oh, do we just keep going up? Because there's this. Ah, we just keep going up, I see. Can I really make that jump? Can I really make that jump? I can make that jump, okay, good. Alright, I think we're done. Almost. Maybe not. Maybe... what the... Okay, maybe we're almost done. Is this checkpoint reached? But then... I don't know what that means of before. Can we just restart from the checkpoint or what? Well, we're here, almost at the top. Don't know why this is broken like this. It's not very safe, is it? So here's the inside of the dome. I don't know how accurate that is. Like they, that just looks like a flat panels of brick. And there's no. Remember how it says in the Wikipedia, the brick, the bricks were laid in a herringbone pattern. Whereas here, it's just kind of rectangles stacked up normally, so that's wrong. I think the herringbone pattern's kind of important, although I don't know if anybody else is noticing that, apart from me, so... I don't know. Don't know if I... Wait a minute, there's loot down there. There's, uh, there's, there's loot down there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Like it's the like you might think the herringbone pattern is like a it's like a minor thing, right? Why is that important? But the thing is, like structurally, that's the only thing that makes it work. Like if if it weren't for that, the whole thing wouldn't stand up. How do I get up there? Not like that. Can I? I can get up here. Okay. Whoa, what are you... Wow, standing in mid-air, amazing. Now, can I... Get out here? Yes, I can. And then up. Alright. So, back to, uh, back to work. Up here. And straight up we go. So, this is amazing. How do we how do we do this? I guess we do that and then go up. <laughs> wow, they even pulled back the the field of view. Like the they put a fish eye lens here so you can look down. Cool. That's dramatic. Alright, well let's it's just run across here. And this part, which makes no structural sense at all. And then here we are. Yes, loot. This is not real. 
I'm pretty sure this is not real. There's no treasure inside the dome. Or oh, inside the lantern on top of the the, the Duomo. Look at these gold things. There's a lot of money in here, wow. Alright, I guess that ends our our architecture tour of the Duomo of Florence. What are you doing? It's the open that. Uh, so I guess in the next video we get back to the game. Yeah. Anyway, let's just finish this off. Exit through the nearby window. Wow, really? Just break out of here? Well, that was fun, wasn't it? I think it was fun. I had a lot of fun. Alright, so I'm gonna end this video here, and then when we come back, we continue with the game. Uh, as soon as it stops loading this. Hey, that's cool. Give you another view of the, of the cathedral. Alright, I'll see you guys.